Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to this week's webisode. I'm Jeff Phillips and every week I bring in a different business to help share tips and valuable information to you and today I'm real happy that I have Phil and Phil welcome to the show. Good to meet you all. Yes and I want you to explain to the viewers a little bit about yourself. Um, well I've been at this for 22 years now and I've probably done a thousand hours of footage easily um, and I'm going to concentrate mostly today on the documentary approach because I think it's going to help viewers who are actually involved in getting better and better with their own camera work. Okay. So we'll get right into it. What, what could you uh, suggest to the viewer to help keep their camera stable? Okay. I actually have a prop today. Okay. Some of, some of us call this a camera. <laughs> so I want to get the positioning right, which is really important for getting stable work out of uh, filming because a lot of you are, are, are going to film more on the fly because things are happening fast, such as a, at a birthday party or a family event or a family get together. So one of the things I've learned over the years in good stability is actually to create the triangle with your arm against your body, which is, uh, I hope you can all see it, which is going to be more this kind of thing. And why are you bringing it into the body? Because after holding it, strangely enough, for 5, 10, 20 minutes, depending on your own weight structure, you wind up having this shake going on and you don't even, most of the time, you're not even aware of it. Here's another point. We're bringing it into the body, right? Here's another point. Since the viewfinders now all flip out, and by the way, 22 years ago, they didn't even have such a thing. Since they all flip out, we're going to hold it on the side here. So now we have ourselves this triangular setup. We have our hand on the viewfinder and we're able to then zoom in and zoom out or pan right and pan left. And by the way, the slower you pan, the easier it is to see the results on the screen, and the slower you zoom, the easier it is to not feel like you're over-zooming your zoom. Okay, so speaking of zooming, um, why don't you talk about a little bit about the zoom button and, you know, why would you want to zoom and, and things like that? Sure. Uh, obviously, zoom gets you closer to your subject. And obviously, if you're rolling, you want to do that as smooth as possible so that it doesn't look like an earthquake ta taking place or that you're over-zooming where you go zoom in, zoom out. I think I need to be there. I think I need it back. And then back and forth and back and forth. Between the earthquake and the over-zooming, you know, it gets pretty sickening after a while to look at. So you want to make a decision on your zoom. If it's a human you're, you're actually looking at, you're going to come into that human for a reason, okay? Normally, when people talk and they make a point, they actually make a point that is developed, meaning, you know, it takes me a while to tell you. I'm going to tell you about my experience this way. And as the experience unfolds, as they're telling it, you slowly zoom in so that you're winding up intensifying their actual conversation to you. Okay, great. So one thing, too, that I, I know I like to do because, as you probably know, the more you zoom in, the more, you said, the emotion of the person or whatever you're filming intensifies, but also so does the shake in the camera. It will intensify. You have a couple advantages here now because most of these cameras have optical stability. But you really got to concentrate on that triangular form. You really got to hold it as still as possible. And, you know, essentially, we all know the best solution would be to get yourself your, you know, very own tripod, which then you can assure yourself an absolutely good stable and, and what I would consider much better quality images. So you put yourself a little bit notch ahead and above, excuse me, above other filmmakers because of the fact that you know more about how to control the camera. Exactly, exactly. So why don't you explain a little bit, you know, uh, what happens or what, it, what can be, um, I guess, um, interpreted by shooting at different heights. Okay, the, there's a height principle. And again, uh, be, bear with me, this is a combination of my learning over time and a combination of my reading and learning and studying. Filmmaking, video production is a, a language, just like English, uh, English, Spanish, French, German, as their languages. So we are visually and audibly communicating an experience and we're, to, we're describing this to others. So this is real important how we do it in the, the best possible conditions. Over the years I've learned that a low angle is very good in giving somebody a more grand grand kind of stature about looking up at them they're really important to look up at the average height elevation would be as if you were 
us in a conversation. Mm -hmm. So you're standing, you know, and you're holding it. So now, if you're a six foot nine, you might want to have to crouch a little bit to get to somebody that's smaller than you. The point is, you're on their level. That's the real point about it. So if you're on their level, you've gained, you know, there's a whole trust going on between you back and forth. And again, this is a behind the scenes interpretation, but I've learned over the years what that kind of thing means. All right, so we had the low angle, we have the eye view, and then we have the high angle, which actually is communicated as diminishing a person. You're looking down upon them. And one, this is an interesting side point. I do not film kids looking down upon them. I don't think that is being at their level. So I'll go back to the camera real quick. So here comes the camera from the eye, and it comes down here to the child's level. It's probably out of the frame, but you know what I mean. It's going down to the child's level. And I tell you what, kids love looking at themselves at their level because they like it's their world you're now perceiving and, and, and relating. Yeah, that's a good tip. Great. Well, I, I think uh, this is a great start for any um, uh, you know home movie maker or begin, beginning videographer, whatever the case may be. Where could a, a um, you know anybody watching this that is interested in um, continue uh, learning? Con yeah, continue learning. Where can yeah. they go? And we never stop learning in the film production business. Believe right. me, it's just completely amazing how it keeps expanding, technology-wise and substance-wise, meaning storytelling-wise. Um, you know, a, a, just like in writing English, a good story has a beginning, and a middle, and an end, and that's the way you should consider your approach to any event or anything you're about to tell about the family. But a forum, obviously everybody's using the web now, a forum is a great place to interact and learn because you can actually stumble, I don't know what you mean, <laughs> and really somebody will take the time, you know, it looks like, oh, well, five or six people are telling me, ah, this is great, I've learned about that, how to control that. But most importantly, I really want you to have fun with this because if you have fun with this, it will definitely be the way to go. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate the tips and hopefully you all got a lot of uh, out of this as well. And if you found this video valuable and it's your first time hanging out with us, you know, I'd love to have you subscribe at InFocusStudios.com or here if you're watching this on YouTube at, in, at the InFocus Studios YouTube channel. And feel free to leave any comments below this video. We'd love to uh, hear from you and hopefully uh, follow up and give you some more tips and advice. Thanks a lot and see you next time.